the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Everybody sit down. Although, you know, I notice in the New Testament, the people stand when Jesus is talking, and Jesus sits down. <laughs> Somehow this seems a little backwards, but this is the, this is the way we're going. So what a scene we have in this uh, very familiar gospel that's read for every feast of the of the mother of God. You have the two sisters, right? Uh, Martha and, and Mary. Jesus is teaching, and Mary is just right there with Jesus, listening, hanging on every word that comes out of his lips. Martha, of course, is concerned about the hospitality. All of these people are there. They're there to hear Jesus, and it's, the, it's her house. Lazarus' house, Mary's house, Martha's house. And they, the, the law of hospitality, which some of the fathers say, by the way, is higher than fasting. I often like to keep that in mind. Anyway, <laughs> she is, as the, as the King James says, cumbered about much serving. Right? And she complains to Jesus that you know, I'm, I'm doing all this work and running around and getting the food and getting the beverages and a blah, 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 blah. And look at my sister, what she's doing. Mary is just sitting there listening to you. Now, Jesus' response, and it, we're so familiar with it, right? I mean, it's a, he, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but only one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that what Jesus is saying here is a kind of a universal principle, a universal uh, uh, teaching that serving, that hospitality, that uh, uh, all of that... Uh, is of very little value. And that would be a mistake to think that. But for that moment, because you have the bridegroom with you not for long, Jesus says, Mary has chosen that good part, and that is to listen. Now, of course, this reading is being read for the mother of God. <laughs> so we have, to, uh, we have to cast in our mind and in our hearts, how does it apply? How does it apply? And I think once we just take a minute with it, we realize that yes, when Jesus was preaching, when Jesus was teaching, when Jesus was performing miracles, when Jesus, the mother of God was almost always there. Right? Part of the company. She was, in effect, at all times, sitting at his feet so that she could treasure all of those things in her heart, as the scripture says. And much of it, his teaching, much of it, his early life, his birth, etc., she shared with the holy apostle and evangelist Luke. And that's how we get all that really good information. Luke is largely a, a part of the sharing of the mother of God with that holy apostle. But after her repose, after she stays with Jesus and hears everything, even those seven last words from the cross, right? she th then is going to take on a different role. And she is going to be what? She's going to be about much serving, isn't she? Serving who? Serving us. She is about much serving, day in and day out, praying for the world praying for each and every one of us, being attentive to us, even 
in our death as she was to her son on Golgotha. She attends to each and every one of us and prays for us and repels the demons and helps us, helps us along with our guardian angel and those who pray for us through those aerial toll houses at our initial judgment. So what an important service and serving that she does. And how important is that to us? When we celebrate the feasts of the Mother of God, we celebrate the greatest help, earthly help, and heavenly help that God can give us, that Christ can give us other than himself. Right. And there can be no greater joy for us than the celebration of these feasts. And how precious it is for you as a community to have this very special feast in honor of the wonder-working icon of the Mother of God, the joy of all who sorrow, because it's all about her serving. If you look at the bottom of the icon, I can't really see it from here, because I'm, I'm on camera. I'm probably not even in the shot, who knows. All the people below, they represent who? All of us. It's the poor. It's the crippled. It's the injured. It's, it's every category that you can think of. It's orphans. It's widows, right? Every category of human pain, every category of human suffering is represented in those people gathered at the feet of the Mother of God. And what is she doing? She's distributing to each and every one of us what we need, what we need. And that is her loving attention and her intercession on behalf of our souls. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory, Glory forever. forever.